What's up? I'm Hutch. And you need to know how to tell wounds apart so that you can treat them. And also pass the NPTE. Remember when you do a wound assessment, you're going to be looking at location, size, odor, color, and exudate. We can throw out odor for now because that's only going to happen if the wound is infected. Pressure ulcers, or bed sores, are wounds that occur on bony prominences after long periods of immobilization. Think bed-bound patients who have been in the hospital for months. These are really deep wounds that usually show up as bruising before they open and can involve extensive undermining and tunneling. Once they're open, they're usually red with yellow slough and have variable amounts of exudate. Neuropathic or diabetic ulcers happen because the patient can't feel their feet. So they get a little cut or scrape on their foot and the more they walk on it, the more that it progresses and worsens. Because of where they are, which is usually the weight-bearing surfaces of the foot, so the second metatarsal area or the heel, the wound will appear with a calloused rim around a red wound bed. They're similar to arterial wounds in that they're usually pretty dry. <coughs> wounds that come from burns are pretty variable depending on what did the burning and how extensive it was. You can use the rule of nines to determine how much surface area of the body the wound is covering. Depending on what did the burning, again, the presentation can vary in color from red to white to black. Knowing the skin layers will help you determine the depth and severity of the wound as well as the presentation. <coughs> Venous wounds occur because there's some damage to the veins. So either the vessels themselves are damaged or the one-way valves are damaged. Either way, fluid will collect usually in the feet because that's where gravity pulls it and a wound will occur because of the excess moisture in that area. The wound will usually open around the medial ankle or gaiter region, and there will be uh, inverse champagne bottle edema, as well as tons of exudate and drainage. The wound will usually be red with yellow slough if there is any, but because of the excess fluid and the iron from the blood kind of floating around in that area, it can stain the skin a brown color, which is called hemosiderin. Arterial wounds occur because the blood is stopped in the arteries. So the arteries might be narrowed, there might be an actual clot. Either way, the blood isn't getting to the tissue it needs to get to. Usually these wounds are seen in the lateral ankle or in the toes, somewhere farther away from the heart, so the heart can't push past that blockage. However, because there's no blood flow to the area, the wound will be very dry. It's usually pretty small and it could happen with necrotic tissue like eschar. Now this is just a surface review of the main categories of different types of wounds. I'll be doing a video on each type to go into a little bit more detail. So if you're still feeling a little bit confused, just hold tight till those videos come out. Now it's time for NPT Jeopardy. Pause the video now if you want time to read and think about the question. Otherwise you've got five, four, three, two, one. Low ankle brachial index indicates arterial occlusion or blockage. Hopefully that covers all of our bases. If not, you can always check out the description box below for a link to my notes on Etsy, as well as a very amateur rap that I wrote in school about different wound types. Or you can drop me a comment with questions or suggestions for videos I should do in the future. Otherwise, good luck studying. Go change the world.